thank you. Um, I'm Justin. I'm going to talk about our paper. This is work with my equal co-author, Andre Karpathy, and our advisor, Fei-Fei Li, at Stanford. When a person looks at an image, it's really natural to point at image regions and describe what you're seeing. So in this example image, when you look at the scene, you might describe things like a man sitting on a red bouncing ball, a person sitting on a chair and eating a sandwich. Um, but as people, we can describe not only these really salient objects, but also less important things in the scene, like the black bag on the floor or the metal door handle. This task of jointly detecting image regions and describing them in natural language we define as dense captioning. And dense captioning requires our visual models to understand not only the contents of the scene, but also the natural language used to describe them. So it's a very interesting and complex problem to solve. Dense captioning fits in naturally with the existing landscape of computer vision tasks. Image classification is the simplest task, associating a single label with the entire image. Object detection gives denser labels, producing a set of image regions, each annotated with a single label. Image captioning works on the entire image, producing a sequence of labels, but again, it, it only refers to the entire image. Dense captioning naturally combines the label density of object detection with the label complexity of image captioning by describing many, many image regions with natural language. The dense captioning task is relatively open-ended, so we need some way of telling our models what they should and should not describe in images. For this, we simply ask people to perform the dense captioning task and train our models to mimic the people. For this, we use the Visual Genome Region Captions dataset. When real people perform dense captioning, they give you a lot of interesting results. Sometimes people describe scene level information, like two men playing frisbee. Sometimes people describe objects, like the red flying frisbee or the boy wearing jeans. Sometimes people describe object parts, like the legs of the man or the athletic shoe on the foot. And sometimes people describe background regions, the stuff in the image, such as the wooden privacy fence or the ground made of stone. Overall, the data set is very densely annotated, with about 50 regions and captions per image. And in total, it contains more than 100,000 images and more than 5.4 million human-written regions and captions. To build models for dense captioning, we build on two major areas of related work. One is image captioning, and the other is object detection, which I'll quickly review. In recent, approaches to, in recent approaches to image captioning, an image is first processed by a convolutional network to extract a feature vector describing the image. This feature vector is then passed to a recurrent neural network language model to generate the caption. This recurrent network generates the sentence one word at a time, each word conditioned on the context of previously generated words. In the popular RCNN method for, for object detection, uh, a region proposal method, such as selective search, is first used to extract a set of candidate regions in the image. Next, these regions are cropped and resized to a fixed scale and processed independently by a convolutional network, which produces a, uh, a label, a predicted label for each of these regions. Prior work on dense captioning by Carpathia and Fefe has combined these two approaches into a simple pipeline. First, use region proposals to select regions crop them and crop and resize them, process them with a convolutional network, and for each of these regions, pass to our current network to generate region-level captions. This pipeline for dense captioning is relatively straightforward, but it has a couple major problems. First, the, our generated captions don't have a lot of context in the image. For example, if we wanted to draw write a caption for this box of the man, the tight box of the man is not enough context to know that he's throwing a frisbee. Second, this pipeline is inefficient, since each, since each region must be processed independently by the convolutional network. Finally, this approach is not end-to-end, -end, since it relies on an external method for generating region proposals. This is particularly bad for dense captioning, since sometimes we want to describe not only individual objects, but also regions encompassing multiple objects, or background stuff regions in the scene. To solve this problem, we'll, we will formulate a single end-to-end -end function that takes as input an image and it produces as output a set of regions and captions, and we'll train this whole thing end-to-end -end jointly using the visual genome data. 
We'll start with the, with the method from prior work and make several modifications informed by recent advances in object detection. So uh, similar to, to fast RCNN, we can take our convolutional network and split it into a stack of, of convolutional layers and a fully connected recognition network. The convolutional net, uh, next, we can swap the order of convolution and cropping. The convolutional network can now process the entire image at a high resolution, producing a convolutional feature map for the entire image. We can then crop out the section of the feature map corresponding to each region proposal. This modification greatly improves the efficiency of the system by sharing computation between different region proposals. However, this setup still, still depends on an external method for region proposals. So, similar to faster RCNN, we insert a localization layer between the convolutional network and the, localiz and the recognition network. This localization layer's responsibility is to internally propose some set of candidate regions and to produce a set of features for each region. Internally, the localization layer considers a grid of locations in the image and places several anchor boxes of various sizes and scales at each location. For each of these boxes, the model produces five numbers. The first four numbers transform the anchor box into a region proposal, and the fifth number gives the model's confidence in that proposal. During training, we align our produced object, object proposals to ground truth boxes in the image. Proposals that match ground truth boxes are positives, and the rest are negatives. Positive proposals have their confidence scores increased during training, while negative proposals have their scores pushed down. In addition, positive proposals should match the position and caption of their aligned ground truth boxes. Finally, the localization layer crops out sections of the CNN feature map corresponding to each region proposal. Rather than using the ROI pooling mechanism of FASTRCNN, we instead choose to use bilinear interpolation as presented in spatial transformer networks. This modification makes our system fully differentiable, allowing us to propagate gradients backwards through the coordinates of our produced bounding boxes. This combination of a convolutional network, uh, a, a localization layer, a fully connected recognition network, and a recurrent neural network forms our final architecture for dense captioning. We train the entire system jointly end-to-end -end by minimizing five loss functions. The localization layer has a regression loss for box positions and a classification loss for box confidences. The recognition network gets a chance to make corrections on this, and so it also has a regression loss and a classification loss. Finally, the recurrent network has a captioning loss to, uh, to model the language of the image. This system solves many of the problems with the method used in prior work. By swapping the order of, con of cropping and convolution, this helps the context problem, since features from deep convolutional layers have large receptive field sizes in the input image. The system is efficient by sharing computation between region proposals, and the system is end-to-end -end since we learn to generate region proposals jointly with the rest of the system. Let's look at some qualitative results. In this image from the visual genome test set, our system finds a man riding an elephant. Notice that the box covers both the elephant and the people. The system also finds two people sitting on a bench, several of the, out of the parts of the elephant, and two trees in the background. The model also works on novel images. In this image of an office at Stanford, it finds the computer monitors, the people, a red and brown chair, the backpack and the door handle, and also the wall. To quantitatively evaluate our model, we define a dense captioning metric which evaluates both our bounding boxes and our captions. Compared to prior work that used independent processing on top of Edgebox's region proposals, we get a pretty healthy boost. In addition to being more accurate, our method is also more than 13 times faster than the prior method. On a Titan X GPU, we can process several high resolution frames per second. So far, we've seen how our dense captioning models can be trained to produce novel captions, but as a bonus task, we can also run them in reverse and use a trained model to retrieve regions that match a natural language query. To find image regions that match the query head of a giraffe, we first run the convolutional network, the localization layer, and recognition network forward on each image in the dataset, keeping the most confidently detected regions. Next, for each of these regions, we can use our trained recurrent network to compute the probability of generating the query from the region. Um, and regions that, that better match the query will have, more, will have higher probabilities, so we can sort by these for retrieval. 
When we look for giraffe heads on the visual genome test set, we find that the model is able to correctly localize giraffes even when they take up a very small portion of the image. We can handle more complex phrases with object interactions, such as hands holding a phone. Most of these are correct, but sometimes we find things like cameras or remotes instead of phones. When we look for front wheels of a bus, our model is able to correctly retrieve buses, but it can't quite tell the difference between front and back wheels. Code for the paper is released on GitHub. In addition to training and test code, you can handle, uh, we can, you can compute the mean AP metric and also run the model live off a webcam, which is pretty cool. And it looks something like this. So here's uh, Andre in our office at Stanford, and you can see the model is detecting a whole bunch of stuff in the scene. Um, it's kind of hard to read, so it'll pause here in just a second. Um, so you can see that it's found the man wearing a blue shirt, a uh, man has dark hair, man with a beard, it's detecting the chairs. So it's able to say a lot of stuff about the scene. And now when Andre goes behind him and picks up this, uh, this beautiful mouse pad, it doesn't quite know that this is a red panda, but it thinks it's instead a white and black cat, which is a pretty good guess in my opinion. Uh, thanks for your attention, and if you have any more questions, please feel free to stop by our poster in slot number two.